All right, guys, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I was able to create a kind of um, berry growth bush plant thing over time and uh, where your character can plant them using seeds and then pick more berries after it's all planted. And I'm going to do this tutorial a little bit differently than I usually do my tutorials. With my past tutorials, I covered every single inch of what I did, which included some of the arts of um, making these different bush patches things whatever you want to call them and also I recreated everything in a new project file I'm gonna go ahead and try to do it without doing that because it just seemed too redundant and it's just kind of a waste of time but if you guys do need to know those things then just let me know and I can start doing them that way if um doing it that way really uh helps a lot more than just kind of getting to the point so I'm just going to showcase to you guys real quick exactly how this works. So at first you may have noticed uh, the image popped in real quick and left. That's fine as long as it's, you know, your character comes in here from like a pretty far distance away. And like I said uh, in some of my past videos, there are ways to change that. So yeah, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. If it is, then I can probably try and figure it out, but currently I'm not about to uh, figure out more than exactly what I needed to get for this, because this was pretty difficult to create. In this chest, there are tools, uh, the watering jug, and purple berries. So if you look in inventory, item, you have purple berries. And they don't really do anything other than uh, you can plant them. So if we come over here and we uh, click on the patch, would you like to plant some berries? Yes. Which berries would you like to plant? So later in the game, I'll add different colors and stuff like that or names. Who knows? But yeah, purple. Uh, you plant and water some purple berries. All right. So now they've uh, turned to stage one out of four and they're currently growing. And I have it set to where every hour they grow one stage. So with this obelisk thing here, I can... Um, change the time and set minutes to 59 and I believe it's uh, times going by 10 times faster in this game than uh, real time so it only takes six seconds at most after you've clicked this for the next stage and currently they are at stage two out of four now let's go ahead and advance some time we have stage three out of four and then the final stage is four and there it is now, I did make this video before, but there was one issue where if you advance time again, it would disappear, even though it's fully grown. I had everything done with the video, compiled and everything, and then all of a sudden it just broke, so had to, I'm redoing this all now. But yeah, after it's fully grown, you just click on it. Uh, your berry plant is now fully grown. Would you like to pick it? Yes. You pick three purple berries. Awesome. And then in our inventory, we have three purple berries. And then you could plant them and repeat the cycle. And also, if you do not pick up the tools ahead of time, we have a condition where uh, it looks like something could be planted here. So in all of my games, I kind of have a, you know, a bush or a rock, uh, impassable objects that look like eventually you'll be able to pass them or objects you can't yet interact with. And it just, I always put like, oh, it looks like uh, something, oh, I wish I had a tool to smash this or wish I had a tool to cut this or now which um, it looks like something could be planted here. So kind of little hints that, uh, you know, there's content in the game that you will be able to do, but you cannot do now, uh, of course, unless you have the uh, watering jug and some berries. All right, so first things first, what I had to do was create a kind of four-staged berry plant. And if you do look in your tile set, if you go to outside B, you have this uh, berry plant here. So I took that plant, and if I could show you guys, I basically made a whole new uh, template here under characters because if you store things in characters, you, you then that take up one independent event. You don't have to worry about um, overcrowding your template for like this, for example. This eventually will be just filled up and there's really no point in it's just they don't give you a lot of space and so these are really only for tile sets, things that are kind of, um, you know, you're going to need more than just one of these. But with uh, berries, it's just very simple. You make a, you basically copy one of these characters and then change the name and put the berries right here. Make sure you snap in everything using an image editor like GIMP2 or Photoshop. And then I just kind of uh, cut off the edges a bit, made it look smaller, 
repeated it again and again and it kind of looks like four stages of a plant and then for the item you will need i have i made a watering jug um i didn't make a watering can because they don't have one and i didn't want to download any art that i didn't have rights to so i had to go ahead and just choose this one which came from this picture right here this pink jug and so i just uh colorized it and made it bluish now for purple berries i just kind of you know it's what I did was I took one of these guys, I got rid of the um, gold ring around it, and then just uh, um, scaled one down, and then scaled one half as down, put it over it a little bit, and then just put that one right over there, and then you have some berries. Now, these aren't final images, obviously. They're just kind of placeholders of what I'm going to have there eventually. But yeah, they don't look too bad. And uh, the purple berries are just regular item. Yeah, you can't consume it or really do anything with it and the watering jug is a key item so every item that allows the player to progress through a certain point of the game or have access to a new sort of skill i guess like fishing a fishing rod or whatever will be a key item at least in my opinion now keep in mind this only works well not only but it helps if you have a kind of clock going in your game so if you just have a um when you start the game, run a clock, and what this does is it just runs a clock. And um, I do have a tutorial on my channel about how to run a clock, but it's pretty simple to do, and um, the clock helps, you know, have time pass by. So you're going to need a clock in order to do this. Right here we have what I start in every single game I make. It is a game start event where it runs in... Um, assigns any necessary values it needs to to any sort of values and then it goes away forever and just does not work ever again so what it does is it's going to turn the clock on and then it sets a variable called uh, testberry patch stage to four and then it turns itself off forever basically the obelisk here basically just asks set minutes to 59 and then you yes or no and then just if yes change minutes to 59 with the clock you're going to have to have all of uh, these variables as well just seconds minutes hours days weeks all that kind of time stuff to quickly sum up the clock event uh, basically it waits for six frames and then uh, every time after six frames it's going to add one to seconds as soon as seconds reaches above 59 it's going to reset seconds and add an increment one to minutes so after 59 seconds you get zero seconds and one minute and that basically just goes throughout all of the variables. So minutes increments 1. Once minutes uh, reaches past 59, it's going to reset and add 1 to hours. And then once hours goes past 23, keep in mind it has to be one less however many are in a day. And they're not 59, they're 23, well, 24, but you have to subtract 1 because 0 is also counted as 1 hour. And uh, just after 23, after hours is uh, over 23, you're just going to do the same thing you um, intuitively do. As soon as minutes rolls over, so as soon as minutes is greater than 59 and minutes resets itself and adds one to hour, what you're going to do is have a nested if statement here. The first one's going to check if uh, the testberry patch stage is on. And if it is on, then it's going to check if the testberry patch stage variable is greater than zero. If so, it's going to then decrease by one testberry patch stage variable. So it will keep doing it until it is zero. This is basically what happened with my first video I was making. I didn't put this in to where if, uh, the, st um, if the berry plant was in its final stage, does the stage value keep decreasing? And this, this little check here makes sure that it does not. So once it reaches its final stage, it's done. It just does not do anything until you plant again. That's really all you need to add in here. If you have more than one berry plant area, you're going to have to keep putting in these. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a pain, and I wish there was a little bit more of an easy management, like little plus tabs or something collapse it. But there's not, and we have to kind of deal with that. But that's really all you need to do for this. Now, one of the most difficult things to kind of set up this whole event, the bush event, was the fact that this guy right here, this whole conditions for each event... If you choose variable, you cannot change this sign right here, which is just very absurd. I don't understand why they don't let you do that. It would be so much easier. But it was the reason why I couldn't go from uh, 
decreasing numbers from uh, from basically four and then down to zero. So you kind of have to do everything backwards and that's why you see this flash in. Because it starts, if you notice, with this uh, game start event, we set uh, test berry patch stage to four. Now what that does is it still satisfies this event condition right here. See, test berry patch stage is four and four is greater than or equal to zero. But a kind of nice thing they did was it's going to go ahead and check it, but then check the second one as well. And if this one also fits uh, the conditions correctly, it's going to ignore this and execute this event. But then again, it's going to keep doing it and doing it and doing it. So once it reaches the final part here, uh, test berry patch stage 4 is equal to or greater than 4, it's going to stop looking past it. So that's why you see it flicker in because it is actually loading all of these really quickly and then it stops right here. Now once you get here you're obviously not going to have anything in the image because you're going to want an empty um, little plant plot there showing. Uh, you're going to have it the same uh, priority same as character so your character can click it and interact with it. You're going to have a uh, trigger be the action button so you click it or you, um, you hit enter when your character is facing it. And basically, you're going to start with a simple if statement. If party has watering jug. So, if they do not, then it looks like something could be planted here will be shown. Basically, they're not going to have a watering jug. You can't plant anything. You haven't been taught, at least in my game, how to do it. So, it's just going to give you that in response. Now, right after, if your party does have a watering jug, you're going to prompt it, would you like to plant some berries? So, the choices here is yes and no. If no, then just don't do anything at all and it just exits the whole entire event. If yes, it's then going to run another if statement to make sure party uh, has purple berries. If you're going to add more berries into the game, you're then going to run through a couple more if statements here that are probably all going to be maybe nested. I'm not really sure, but for simplicity here with only one possible thing to plant, it's just going to check the one thing. So if you ha do not have any purple berries, it's going to then tell you you don't seem to have any on you. But if you do, it will then prompt you which berries would you like to plant. I just kind of future proof this so that when I do add in more berries, I could then just add them right there. So right now it's only going to prompt you purple or never mind. If never mind, it's just going to exit the whole thing. When you choose purple, so as you can see right here, when purple, it's going to tell you you plant and water some purple berries. Now in this moment, what you're going to have to do is turn the switch test berry patch stage on. I don't know why I named it that. I just, I don't know, just to make it clear for me, I guess. It's kind of a mouthful to say. So it's going to turn the stage on. The reason why you need to turn this on is because in our time con uh, common event, the only thing that allows the berry patch to kind of go down in stages or for us go up in stages is if the, uh, if the variable or switch is on so that's what we do right there we turn it on next what we're gonna do is decrease the amount of purple berries your player has by one because they just used once so that kind of makes sense and then the last thing we're gonna do for this page at least is uh, subtract one to uh, the variable automatically so if we just turned it on nothing would happen until after 59 minutes and we want something to happen immediately so what we're going to do is just manually set test berry patch stage variable decreased by one right now it is at four so as soon as you decrease it to one it's basically going to run through this checklist again and then look through the conditions checking for when test berry patch stage is equal to or greater than zero at first and it is equal to or greater than zero because it's three so it satisfies this then it's going to check here and check here then it's going to stop right here so once it's right here you're just going to show a kind of progression through the plant's life and you're going to just if the character decides to interact with it you're going to say something like your berry plant is currently in stage one out of four so pretty simple enough now when time goes by as soon as minutes rolls back over and adds on an hour it's then going to decrease this variable again causing it to go to the third event page, which is just like the fourth one, except it's uh, the berry plant looks like a little bit more grown, it's stage two out of four, and you can interact with it. And so on with this one where it decreases again and shows it as stage three out of four and looks almost fully grown. As soon as minutes rolls over, 
test berry patch stage variable is going to become zero. And when it becomes zero, it then shows you this final event page, which can prompt, which tells the player, your berry plant is now fully grown. Would you like to pick it? Then you show choices, yes or no. If no, don't do anything. If yes, play a little jingle. And the current jingle I have here is, I don't know, this? Yeah. So that kind of sounds like you're picking a berry plant, I guess. And then uh, I have it so that you, the player is given three berries per one berry they plant. Shows some text, you pick three berries. And now what you have to do is turn the test berry patch stage switch off. So you, you're done, it's gone, uh, this, this particular patch is off. You're going to have to obviously have multiple switches for multiple berry plant plots. So if you're going to have a uh, another plot where you can grow berries, you're going to have to have like this. I have them right here. So like berry patch one, two, three, four switches. And also same goes with these variables as well. You're going to have um, two, uh, one switch and one variable per plantable plot plot you have if that makes any sense so it turns the switch off and then it resets the um the variable of the patch to four and setting it back to four then brings us back to this first or last event page where the player can now plant some more and uh that is basically it i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial i know it was a little bit different but it is a lot easier for me to do when i don't have to recreate it all and if this does not work for you guys, please let me know because for some reason my last video, I had to change a couple things because of a caching issue, which might have been fixed due to a Yanfly plugin. These do not, these should not require any plugins at all. Uh, not all of my tutorials will not require plugins, but I do kind of need to make things in my video game that, in fact, I don't want to code myself. I could. But I'm just going to go ahead and make events of, and if I can't, then maybe code it. But as far as I know right now, everything I'm running into, I can just solve using events and not plugins of any kind. Hope this video helped you guys out, and let me know what you decide to do with this. Do you guys plan to have plants grow and be pickable in your video game, and uh, kind of that sort of stuff. So I'll see you guys next time.